So this is topic 10, and uh, let's talk about going from, from polar to rectangular coordinates, and then uh, the other way as well, back and forth. So rectangular coordinates are just what we're used to, points in the form x, y, and they're, they're called rectangular because it's, you kind of move in a, in a, along the side of a rectangle to get there, you know, you go over x and you go up y. So thinking about that, uh, polar coordinates are another way of talking about getting to a point. And polar coordinates involve some sort of angle, some rotation, we'll call it theta, and then some distance r. So you turn that, that distance, or I'm sorry, you turn that rotation theta, and then you throw that, that distance r. And so these are written in the form r theta. So the question is, how do we go back and forth between them? So one thing that I notice just right off the bat with these is that uh, if I make this distance here, if r theta and x, y are in the same spot, there's my r. So I can tell right away that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I also know that if I go over x, if, if this is my theta right here, this is my theta, if I go over x, that would be, um, if r was one, that would be cosine of theta. But it, if r is not one, it's kind of scaled that, so it would be r times cosine theta. And I also know height is sine, so I know that this side is r sine theta. So I also know that, that x equals um, r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. And uh, one other thing I know here, if I have this, this theta right here, um, tangent of that angle is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So that means that theta, I could get at theta by using the inverse tangent of y over x. So there's kind of all my, my pieces. So let me go one way first. If I had a rectangular uh, point, let's just say it was 3, negative 4. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry, negative 4. That would be the point here, 3, negative 4. Um, and I want to change it into... Uh, polar, which would be r theta. The one thing I know is that r is going to be, um, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So this is 9 plus 16. So r squared is 25, sorry about that. So r must be 5. And the other thing I know is this theta, I can get that through my inverse tangent. So if I go inverse tangent of negative 4 over 3, y over x, let me grab my calculator and do that. Um, this actually gives me a value of negative 53.13 degrees. And now I'm going to have to interpret this because... Like, if this, if this had actually terminated here, for example, if it had been the point 3, negative 4, that would have, that would have been right. There's, that's negative 53 degrees right there, um, point 13. But it doesn't terminate here. It's here. So if I think about this whole line, this is 180 degrees. So if I take 180 degrees for, for this case and I, I add it to that inverse tangent that I got, negative 53.13, That'll give me the actual angle that this terminates to. So add 180 to that. And it looks like that is 126, uh, about, about that 0.87. So my r theta would be 5, 126.87 degrees. OK, how about going the other way? How about if I have an r theta and I want to turn it into x, y? So let's say I had, uh, uh, I don't know, the point uh, 7. 200 degrees. So 200 degrees is somewhere around here. 7 is that distance right there. So here's my relationship right here. I know that x is uh, 7 times cosine of 200 degrees. And notice that this is going to take care of my negatives and positives. There's, there's no, no extra piece I have to do like I had to do with the tangent. This will give me the answers right away. 7 sine of 200 degrees. 
So if I do those uh, on my calculator, uh, 7 cosine of 200 degrees is about negative uh, 6.58. There's my x value. And my y value would be 7 sine of 200 degrees, which is about negative 2.39 which looks right, you know, that's in that third quadrant, they're both negative. So there's, uh, there's how to go back, with, back and forth with the points between 